Hello, my friends. I have an incredible guest with me here today, Dr. Jessica Metcalf. We met over the summer in uh, a training program. And before I say any more, Jessica, please introduce yourself to the audience. Uh, first off, thank you so much for having me. I am so looking forward to our conversation. So I am a strategic leadership and workplace culture consultant, and that allows me to step in and work with entrepreneurs, business leaders, C-suites to be able to navigate their introspection on developing their leadership skills, as well at the same time, while they get to improve their team's culture within mm. the business. I love that so much for all of those key terms. We're talking about introspection. We're talking about culture. Jessica, like these have been like top topics for my show. And I love that we're pulling it together with you because you recently released a book. Let's talk mm -hmm. about that for a minute. I believe it's called Speak Kindly, You're Listening. I love that. Yeah, it has been just an amazing experience through the writing process to the publishing. I am so proud of what is in that book. And the reason for it is years ago, I started lecturing and providing workshops on key components of the book. So the book is broken down into four parts, imposter syndrome, perfectionism and people pleasing, burnout, and then the last part, which I call darkness. And yeah. it gave me the opportunity to bring all of my lectures together, share my story, my clients' stories, and then the literature behind why we experience what we experience. Because having that science background, it was always important to bring in the statistics and the research to understand, okay, this is what's happening and how do we go about making the change? So I incorporate into the book, mm -hmm. behavioral science and neuroscience, so that individual can then start making changes immediately within the book. That was always my thing when I read personal and professional development books is I would read someone else's story Mm -hmm. There was no how to's or well, what do I do next? And so right. that's what I felt was missing. And I decided to put that into the book in the form of what I like to call brain training exercises. I love that. And, and we can easily relate to it and then move forward from it. That's, yeah, that's unconventional. And I can see it being very, very popular. You know, uh, we were just talking in the green room about this and you mentioned something about the holidays and, you know, mm -hmm. what, why it was such an important time this time around. Let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah. So this past holiday season in December, 2022 was our first cycle around in this post pandemic era. So this is the first holiday season where things have been open enough for people to do all of the things, visit all the people. So yeah. holiday season, December, 2021, our schedules were still pretty much wiped clean. And so you didn't have all the holiday stress. Fast yeah. forward to this year, you had people cramming in their last minute of work, and then you had all the holiday parties, and then you had the family and friends who said, well, we have to hang out with you. And right. so burnout rates were actually the highest this past December since wow. they've been in a really long time. And as we start to navigate, that then starts to overflow into our leadership skills, into the culture, because if we're spread thin, emotionally, mentally, physically, we have a hard time being able to come back in that January. And that's why seasonal affective disorder ends up kicking in. And so right. we really have to give ourselves the opportunity to be able to say no to certain things and implement those boundaries, whether it is friends, family, and even right. work parties. Yeah. Yeah. Boundaries are so important. So when someone's listening to this now, can we share something, perhaps a boundary setting technique that you think would work, um, something for people to experiment with as they see that they're becoming overwhelmed, they're aware of it? What's perhaps the first thing they should think about, Jessica? So something that people don't think about is how they actually plan their rest and their vacation. Mm. And so when you look at your schedule, you're already probably looking out at all the meetings that you have coming up, the pitches, maybe writing a book, whatever it may be, or applying for a promotion to get that project done to make sure it's in time for that promotion. Whatever that looks like, we tend to plan our personal life around our professional and our working life, which right. means stuff that is truly important to us even taking care of ourselves just falls off the wayside. And so when you start to look ahead, it's important to put rest in 
like your vacations. And so that means we're already at the start of January. People are starting to think about their summer, but I want you to even think about prior to that. There's got to be right. some sort of break in between there because you can't go six months without right taking that rest, whether it's a long weekend, an extra day here, or maybe it's a week off, whatever that looks like to you. Otherwise we get trapped in the same cycle over and over again of being that high achiever, pushing ourselves past the point and then crashing, which we can become physically ill as well, not just where we're sleep deprived. Right. That's such great advice because we want to focus on, you know, who we want to become at the end of the year. Yeah. And my guess is we don't want to become that stressed person, perhaps that we were a month or two ago mm -hmm. and going through all of these things, hitting it once. And I love to say this often to my clients as well, is that rest is productive. It yeah. is a productive yeah. form of being. And I love how you say, you know, don't just schedule six months in advance you know, perhaps there's an exercise, maybe there's something daily that we can incorporate in our lives, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have any suggestions for that, that perhaps work for you? Yeah. So when it comes to your day-to-day, -day, I like to plan. So let's actually take it one step further backwards because January 1st is New Year's resolutions and I actually despise yeah. them. I think that they're the yeah, worst a lot thing of ever. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's a really bad time of year to start any new year's resolution especially in parts of the world where we're in hibernation mode so we're already going to be unsuccessful to begin with january 14th is actually known as quitter day quitters day because it's where most people end up falling off so wow. what i like to do is to create intentions or goals and you can do it at the start of the month you could do it mid-month whatever fits for your schedule the key component is when you start to set those goals you have to give yourself a check-in point to see okay what's going on is it working is it not working how do i make those changes was there's an obstacle in the way that i didn't foreshadow and now i need to create a path around this obstacle so when it comes to planning something for your week plan it out a month at a time or even two weeks at a time so let's say because january 1st is always around something health related with our body right. so let's let's step into that for for a hot second so when it comes to let's say taking care of yourself physically don't underestimate what a walk can do for you as well. It doesn't have to be that massive hit training, body lifting, whatever, or weightlifting that you're going in that you then fall off a week later. No, no, right. we're going to incorporate. Okay, so your schedule is busy to begin with. Let's fit you in first and then plan business meetings around it. So for example, for me, my month of January is yoga. I need something that's a little bit slower for my body. January is just one of those times where I fully go into hibernation mode. I usually get up at between 4.30 and five o'clock, but in the winter months, because the sun's not out, I give myself yes. a leniency to say, don't get, I don't, I don't need to get up until seven. So it's totally fine. Right. Before I used to beat myself up and tear myself down being like, Oh my God, you're not going to be that successful person. The, f the 5 a.m. club, it's not going to happen. Right. Meanwhile, all I needed to do was listen to my body. So right. January is month of slow movement in a hot space. So I try to get into a sauna or I try to get into some sort of hot yoga. And that gives me the opportunity. Now at the end of January, I know that I'm going to want to change out of that right. routine. Right. So then I give myself the permission to not on February 1st, but a week before start to plan out what that change is going to look like. I love that example so much because what you've done here is it, you've applied and shared something that is unique to you. And that's absolutely the permission that we need to give ourselves. Like you're recognizing where you live, and how you like to live, right? Mm -hmm. And what works for you in this season. And you're like, Nope, this is what I, this is what my body needs. So what an incredible lesson I think that we're sharing today is do it your way. Yeah. Do it and do it your way. Cause your way is the best way. And then all of those funky commercials that we see on the television or here, wherever they just don't apply to us. So let's resonate and live with the plan that will help us become successful. And I love how you kind of transition to you like, okay, this is what I'm doing for January. But at the end of January, I'm getting ready for the next month. That's a, that's a nice, yeah. smooth and easygoing transition. Yeah. 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 It makes, 
it makes it easier when we give ourselves a permission to define what our parameters are on life, both personally and professionally. And so you mentioned the word success. You get to define what success is to you at the end of the day. It's not what social media is portraying. It's not what someone's boss has said. It's not even what your parents have said. It's what is success to you and then how do you go about working towards it because in today's 21st century culture especially within north america we've linked success to happiness that's right so we now have to unpack and redefine what that actually means to us on an individual basis for me for the month of january success is allowing myself to hibernate It's not tearing myself down saying, oh my goodness, you didn't get out there and you didn't do this. I'm still working as much as I did, but I still give myself permission to rest during that time. In the summer, it flips. I love being up with the sun. So I'm up at the crack of dawn. I'm doing everything. My workouts change during that time as well. And so as individuals, as high achievers, where that voice can be so loud and angry, voice that I like to call your inner gremlin, it doesn't give you the opportunity to evolve, to be you, to explore what is truly important to you. And at different stages of our life, different things are going to be important to us. So how do we give ourselves the permission then to be able to say, you know what, right now, my kids with where they are in their life are important to me. Right now, the book that I want to write is important to me. Right now, my partner, you get to evaluate that at every stage along the way, instead of just getting stuck in the same routine that North American society and culture has described as this is what you're supposed to be doing right here, right now. That is so perfect because what we're saying here is release the identity that Mm -hmm. you've just tied so tightly with your title, perhaps, or that being the definition of your success. I love how you're giving us an incredible pathway to defining success that much differently. Mm -hmm. Right? It's, so as that high achiever, as that perfectionist, actually the definition of perfectionism is linking your self-worth to the ability to achieve. Ah. And a part of, so the third component of describing perfectionism is that it actually comes with negative side effects, which is- chronic health illnesses. So being a perfectionist isn't actually all it's supposed to be as defining what that perfection is. It can keep a lot of people stuck. It can prevent you from applying for that promotion or doing what you need to do for you. And so when we get to separate that high achiever worth and identity, and as a human being, you're worthy no matter what, at any stage in your life. And when you recognize that it gives you permission to then make mistakes to grow to fail forward to give yourself the opportunity to step into that leadership role and express yourself and try new things but being that perfectionist high achiever and keeping yourself small with that inner gremlin voice that has you then stepping in and reevaluating usually at a later stage in our life yeah. looking back and thinking what did i just do right so instead of balling that all up and waiting until it's decades later you get to unpack that now and develop yourself and ask yourself some of those hard questions that we don't like to ask when leaders come to me a lot of them tend to say well i want to be less stressed and more mm. happy And I'm like, great. So let's talk about your definition of happy. What is happiness? And leaders will say, well, it's being less stressed. I'm like, but what does that mean? If we, if we don't define it, same thing like success, if we don't define what that actually means, how can you work towards it? Right. Right. So it's that redefinition of success. That is so brilliant. So incredibly brilliant, my friend. So I have so many incredible takeaways from this episode But one of the questions that I love to ask all of my guests in all of this work that you get to do, Jessica, do you have a favorite piece of clothing or accessory and how does it make you feel? 
Oh, I do uh, have. They are hoops of all sizes. <laughs> they are my gold hoops that I just absolutely sure. love. Um, so it is a thing from, so my family is Italian. My nonna is um, an immigrant from Italy and my mom's first generation. And it has always been just what the women in my family wear. And yep. I was so against it for so long because it wasn't a cool thing as like a teenager growing up. Yeah. And finally, my own expression and me stepping into it, I'm like, this is me. So it's my gold hoops for me. I love that for all the reasons that I can appreciate because my parents immigrated from Italy. So we'll have to have an uh, off recording conversation. So we'll keep <laughs> talking. But in the meantime, I love your work. Um, I, I will reference your book in the show notes. And if someone wanted to reach out to you, Jessica, and talk with you a little bit more, where's mm. the best place for them to find you? Yeah, they can find me on LinkedIn under Dr. Jessica Metcalf, or they can check out my website, www.drjessicametcalf.com. Excellent. So I will include both of those links in the show notes to make it nice and easy. Um, and I appreciate you so much today, Jessica, for making the time. I hope you have an incredible day. Thank you so much for having me. Of course.